From the KPIX 5 Newsroom, this is Bay Area Nightbeat on KBCW. Tonight, another community reeling from another mass shooting, 20 dead and 26 wounded in El Paso, when a suspect with an assault weapon opened fire on a Walmart packed with back-to-school shoppers. Good evening, I'm Juliette Goodrich. And I'm Brian Hackney. Nightbeat begins with Betty Yu at the Live News Desk with what we're learning about the victims and the alleged gunman. Betty? Brian, the injured victims, right now there are nine of them in critical condition, and the El Paso police chief says that the suspect allegedly left behind a manifesto and that the shooting may have a nexus to a hate crime. These surveillance photos show the alleged shooter moments before the attack at the Walmart Supercenter. The suspect has been identified as 21-year-old Patrick Crucius. He was taken into custody without incident. Police say the store was packed with as many as 3,000 people during the busy back-to-school shopping season. This video captures the terrifying moments shots rang out. A shopper taking cover underneath a table, recording those gunshots that put businesses on lockdown and panicked shoppers fleeing. Amidst the chaos, people desperately search for their loved ones. I want to just find my mom. Somebody needs to tell me where she is. I want to know if she's dead or alive or if she's still in Walmart. The neighboring Cielo Vista Mall went into lockdown. Video from behind a closed gate shows police quickly moving through. Some of uh, the other employees, they were coming in and they would they would tell me that they heard some gunshots and people just started bolting straight into the store uh, in order to get get to He's cover. He's canceling Democratic presidential and candidate home. and I'm former El Paso Congressman Beto O'Rourke visited victims in the hospital. When asked if today's violence falls at the feet of President Trump. He is a racist and he stokes racism in this country and it does not just offend our sensibilities, it, it fundamentally changes the character of this country and it leads to violence. Democratic presidential candidate Senator Kamala Harris also weighed in. Assault weapons are designed to kill a lot of people quickly. There is no reason that they should exist on the streets of a civil society. Authorities descended on a home associated with the suspect in Allen, Texas, a suburb of Dallas, and the community gathered for a vigil to mourn the 20 victims. And more than two dozen victims are in the hospital, including a four-month-old child. Now, President Trump condemned the shooting, tweeting, Today's shooting in El Paso, Texas, was not only tragic, it was an act of cowardice. I know that I stand with everyone in this country to condemn today's hateful act. There are no reasons or excuses that will ever justify killing innocent people. Brian? All righty, Betty, thank you. Of course, less than a week ago, we were talking about a mass shooting at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. It left three people dead and 13 injured. The gunman used a semi-automatic rifle and killed himself as officers moved in. Governor Gavin Newsom said today, again on Sunday, it was Gilroy. Today it's El Paso. Our malls, our festivals, our concerts, our churches, our synagogues, our movie theaters, our classrooms, our homes. This is an epidemic. This is a crisis. Treat it like one. We need the Senate to act now. We'll have more coming up on KPIX 5 at 11 and 24 hours a day at KPIX.com. And with the Gilroy tragedy still fresh in everyone's minds, another wildly popular festival opened this weekend, and police are not taking any chances. The Fremont Arts and Wine Festival attracts roughly 300,000 people every year. To keep everyone safe, two officers keep watch overhead from a tower right in the middle. There are also dozens of security cameras and 12 massive portable roadblocks around the perimeter, and attendees say it is paying off. We've seen the cops and we've seen you guys circling, so it does feel very safe. Our goal is to make sure that the community is able to come to this event and know that we're trying everything we possibly can do to keep them safe. Those who decided to come today say they refuse to live their life in fear. Everybody has somewhere in their mind that, you know, there's a Gilroy festival which happened and the, all this tragic event which happened, but that, I wouldn't think that would stop people from going and enjoying their life. 
The two-day festival, which spans four city streets, continues tomorrow. New at 10, the father of one of the Bay Area teens accused of killing an Italian police officer met with the media tonight. He's just back from visiting his son in jail in Rome. Night beats Maria Medina with how the father believes his son will come home. Ethan Elder released a statement outside his home through his attorney soon after landing in San Francisco. Despite the fact his son confessed to the crime, he insists the public doesn't know the full account of what happened, even going as far as saying he looks forward to his son coming home. We saw our son Finnegan. He was okay, but tired, remorseful, and scared. Speaking through his attorney and with a prepared statement. He has our full support and we stand by his side. Ethan Elder says he now has a plan in place to get to the truth. He clutched his family outside his San Francisco home. Mr. Elder, can you tell us how you're feeling? After visiting his 19-year-old son, Finnegan Elder, in a Rome jail where he's accused of murdering an Italian officer with former Tamil Pius high school classmate, Gabriel Natalia Yorth. It's understandable, but unfortunate that people have jumped to conclusions in this matter. Investigators say Finnegan Elder stabbed Mario Churchello Rega nearly a dozen times with a seven inch military grade knife he bought in the U.S. Elder and Natalia Yorth are accused of drinking the night of the killing and police say at least one had been on drugs. Churchello Rega and the teen suspects crossed paths when the officer was called to investigate a botched drug deal. Churchello Rega and his partner were undercover when they approached Elder and Natalia Yorth and were allegedly attacked right away. Elder claims it was self-defense. Churchello Rega was unarmed. The public has an incomplete account of the true versions of the events. Ethan Elder or his attorney did not answer any questions after these final words. It is said, however, the truth will set you free. We look forward to the truth coming out and to our son coming home. If convicted, both teen suspects could face life in prison. On the Night Beat, I'm Marie Medina. Back in the Bay Area, 29-hour standoff in Palo Alto has ended in an arrest. It started yesterday with a domestic violence on Tennessee Lane. A woman left the home safely, but an armed man spent the night barricaded inside his own home. He was finally arrested this afternoon, and police recovered a handgun. Well, right now, a group of fires in East Contra Costa County is 75 percent contained. The Marsh Complex fires broke out around 3 a.m. near Marsh Creek Road, and that's between Brentwood and Clayton. It churned through more than 650 acres of brush and dry grass, prompting the evacuation of Clayton Palms. The minute we opened the door, you could smell the smoke. When you looked out, you couldn't see anything because it was really, really smoky. When it's that smoky, you know it's close. We're focusing on that containment right now to get the fire out and then get it mopped up well. We'll worry about the cause when that time comes. At least nine separate blazes merged into three main fires. Crews will still stay on the scene through tomorrow. And the sky's a little hazy from our Dublin cam as the sun set tonight. The result of a smoke advisory from the Marsh Creek fires. But the bigger issue on the East Bay is the heat. And meteorologist Darren Peck looks at when we might get some relief. Darren. Well, we're going to start to see a little bit tomorrow, Juliet, but more so by the middle of this coming week. More on that in a second. First, we've got to talk about how we were able to score 500 acres before breakfast this morning in the East Bay. Take a look at the map behind me. It's showing you the relative humidity across the Bay Area. The deeper greens show you where you've got a healthy amount. The browns show you where the air was very dry this morning. That's an 18% relative humidity reading this afternoon for Clayton right next to that fire. Look at the difference when you get over the hills. 60% in Oakland, 90% in Richmond. And of course, if I switch from showing you the relative humidity readings to where all the marine layer influence is, you can see it. That's where it's going to be tomorrow. It's going to spread into the North Bay. It's just not going to get far enough into the East Bay yet for a significant improvement, but that's coming. I will see you with the 70 forecast in a few minutes, guys. All right, thanks, Darren. New video of a burglary at a film company in Berkeley. Surveillance video shows a man and a woman making off with boxes and equipment early on Monday. It happened at Frame of Mind Films, which makes documentaries. The company's founder says all of its inventory is gone, which includes original footage for a new film about the Dalai Lama. Berkeley police say their detectives are actively working leads in the case. And a warning tonight about residential burglaries, burglaries in San Rafael. So far, there have been at least 14 cases in four weeks. 
Eight of them have been reported in the Terra Linda neighborhood, and the other six cases have been reported in various areas of San Rafael. Police say the burglaries are happening between 9 in the morning and noon, but they are not explaining why there is a spike in them. No matter where you live in the Bay Area, police are advising to always keep your doors locked. A veteran officer with the Union City Police Department is recovering from a hit and run. The officer was sitting at the corner of 5th and G Streets last night when a Prius being chased by other officers slammed into his cruiser. A witness says the Toyota driver and passenger immediately fled, but a third person stayed at the scene. Just saw the two guys open a, a door and they just run, run away over there, two, two kids, yeah. I just say, hey, stop, stop. They just ignore me and start running. The officer sustained head injuries. The search continues tonight for the suspects. And tonight, Roseville police on the hunt for a suspect in this shocking attack on a Foot Locker employee. Police say the worker was trying to stop a shoplifter when the man grabbed her, almost picking her up, and slammed her onto the ground. Video of the incident, which happened on Wednesday at a Roseville Galleria mall, has garnered millions of views online. Police are looking for help in identifying the suspect. And still ahead, preparing for the worst at Yosemite during a year of extreme snowmelt, how rescue crews practice in icy, fast-moving water. Getting to Alcatraz could get a lot more challenging. What the city is planning that would disrupt plans for millions of tourists. They had a lifetime of savings accidentally tossed away. You'll never believe where it was found.